Welcome to another episode of the Credit Pearls podcast. Today we have the amazing Tom Smith. He is my mentor. He's a business mentor coach. He's also a TEDx speaker. He is he is the owner of Dream Mentoring. Dream Mentoring, um, Dream Apartments. Dream Apartments. Grant Cardone Licensee and oh my God. a few other things too. Okay, a dad, good. a husband and a very grateful guy. So thanks very much for having me today. Oh my God, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Um, it was really, and I know that you travelled, uh, like you were up early this morning to be here, so I really do appreciate it. Yeah, well, that. I woke up at four. Um, I had a Zoom in Manchester with one of my clients. Um, I was in the airport for half seven, flew home, picked my wife up, dropped her to the office in Belfast, gave my wife and kids a kiss, and then came straight here. So oh my God, you're, you, you're high energy. That is what you it is. You are high energy. And the first time I met you, like you're like that all the time. 100% full on all the time. All yeah. the time. So yeah. listen, uh, the way we work this is, I generally ask you a little bit about yourself, what it was like growing up, what mm. you were like as a kid, and then your journey to success. Yeah. Um, so what was that like? And then if there's any piece of, pieces of advice that you could give to people out there, we'll talk about that as we go through it. But that's generally the format that we do. That's cool. Okay, so what were you like as a kid? Yeah, always full on. You know, um, I remember, like I grew up in a house full of love. You know, my mum and dad, they're still alive and I'm really lucky, you know, if I could be a better man, I would be my dad. You wow. know, my mum is a female warrior. So the book Fearless is through my mum, Dorothy, because she's fearless. You okay. know, my mum is a warrior. And, you know, we grew up in the middle of a war. Yeah. And um, my dad was a postman, so he went out to deliver the post and my mum was a car worker and still is. And you know, we couldn't we couldn't really afford much. Like like most people in Northern Ireland. I think most up, people in the eighties, seventies well, and eighties. Yeah, like yeah. I mean we were fucking flat ass broke. Yeah. Really, really broke. And there was times, you know, we would have thought there was a power cut, but it was us running out of electricity. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I remember start sitting toasting a bit of bread on on in the fire. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then I remember my friends all having the best of gear. And my mum and dad do, done the most amazing job. They said they gave us what we could. But at then, at the age of 10, I decided I'm going to take control of this. And I got my first job. At 10? At 10, I was the kid who walk, worked in the chippy. So I worked out the back in this big shed. And I used to put a bucket of potatoes into the machine. I used to open the machine and the potatoes used to come out and I caught them in this other bucket. I put them in the chipping machine, which cut them into the chips. Yeah. And then you put them into a bath, just like a bath that we would get into. Yeah. But in the heart of the winter, the whole back shed was freezing cold, froze. So I used to get a hot bucket of warm water and stand in the water, shivering. To try and get warm? To, to stay warm, because it was soaked to the skin. You potato peel, and I must have been that smelly kid in school because you ever go into a chippy and the, the clo yeah. your clothes stink? Yeah, smell like grease and fish and yeah, everything. But yeah, I went to that chippy every day after after school, and oh I got paid God. ten pound a week. And sometimes I would have looked at my money in my money box, knowing I put that there. And other times I would have saved up three or four weeks and bought a new tracksuit or a pair of trainees or something. So the young entrepreneur was born at ten. You were like, and you were. It was just survival, really, money. Well, yeah, so. I just I wanted the, the hustle came in, Did and it? I knew money gave me a choice. Okay. And money was power and power was money, you know, and it, it might be quite sad, but it really it helped me start seeing that I could take control. OK. And what about school education? Did you do that side of it? Was that something that you did, focused yeah, on? Yeah, went to school straight over my head, like, okay. oblivious. Like, I did really work hard. I loved physical education. I loved business studies. Yeah. Um, but I remember being in physics and the teacher says to me, see that window? Go and sit there and look out that window, Tom. <laughs> And I remember just sitting and looking out that window. But, you Saying, know, there's no point. That was so mean. Yeah, but, you know, see, just getting through school for us was OK. Because, uh, you know, when you walked out those gates, there was a war raging. And, uh, you know, people now watch the news, whereas I, I, I don't watch the news. I'm ba I ban it from my, my life. I, so I haven't watched it in either. nine years. Yeah. But when we were growing up, my mum and dad watched the news because we used it as sat nav, how to get to work or how to get to school. Who was, who was killed and murdered? Was there a bomb that went off? Was there a bomb scare? So the news was our satin off. Oh my God. So, you know, when we went out of the school gates, you didn't know what you were going into. And like how, when you grow up in that environment, how do you stay positive and not full of hate, anger, resentment? Well, you don't. As a kid, you know, I just got goose pimples out. Um, as a kid, you didn't know any better. You know, hatred was everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, both sides 
yeah. hated each other. You know, it's it's so sad when you think back of what mm. we've been through, but then so uplifting to think where we're at now. Yeah. Like I am so proud of both sides and our community leaders because like I never in my life envisaged seeing peace and now we have got it. And it's just it's the most amazing. amazing thing on the planet. And Belfast is booming. Like my friends, Jim Collin and Paul Langsford and Mark and Jim sorry and Mark Burn and stuff own all the bars and restaurants and the place is buzzing yeah. with tourists and it's, it's great to so see and there's no fear even going up because like no, I know just... we grew up in the I was born in the 70s grew up in the 80s like people were afraid of Northern Ireland mm, because but why like, would you not yeah it was just a, it was so terrifying but now to go up and see it and experience Northern Ireland I love it. Mm. it it's great to see but I often think of the people that grew up in that that was a tough environment yeah but then you know it made tough people too. Like resilience yeah. is in my DNA. I'm from Belfast. You know, yeah. nothing fizzes on me. I'm so proud of our city. I'm so proud of our country. I'm so proud of everybody in it. Yeah. And see to see, you know, one of the things that I write in my mantra that we'll probably touch on mm. is constantly evolving and becoming better. Our country is constantly evolving and becoming better. And yeah. I'm so proud to say that I'm from Belfast. Like so proud. Yeah. And it kind of comes with a badge of honour, I think. Because you always think they've been through so much. They've been through the worst, and now look, look at it. We're now. the bounce back city of the world. Yeah, you know absolutely, I mean? absolutely. Really right. So tell me, you were ten years of age. You had this job. That was your first job. Mm. That you, you know, you had to work so hard. Smelly kid going into school. Definitely the smelly um, kid. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then what happened next? Did you, when you became like 18, 19 and moved into like where you could work full time? Yeah, I came through school and um, like I remember all sitting in the youth club and somebody says to me, do you want to join the YTP? I'm like, what's the YTP? And they said, you leave school, you get 500 quid up front. I'm like, let's, let's have it. <laughs> so I, I got my first contract, sorry, my first job as a roofer and I learned to trade. Okay. And um, a guy gave me a chance and he really helped me. And, and then as I went through then I started getting my own roofer, starting to work for me. Um, and I remember we got paid, because I was doing work for security forces, which was a touchy thing to do, you became a target, I got paid something called danger money. Okay. And I remember one of the times working on the police forensic lab, and the policeman come running out and says, get off the roof! And I'm like, why? And the policeman's screaming up at us, there's a, we've had intelligence, there's a sniper in the forest, you're all about to get shot, get off the roof. So our abnormal oh life God. became normal. So what did we do? We got down off the roof. We let the police and stuff do their thing. Obviously, whoever's going to shoot us had left. And about 30, 40 minutes later, had lunch and we just got back up again. You know, abnormal life became normal, you know. So it's a war zone and you were living your normal life in that environment. But you had to. What because it was you your got? normal life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that terror and stuff is now over. But, you know, for a lot of people like me, that, that damage and going through that every single day is definitely the making of you as a person. Yeah. Resilience, you know. Nothing does fizzle me. Fearless. Well, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, but I've also taught myself skills and how to deal with stuff and how to overcome adversity and how to overcome other things. But growing up in the troubles definitely give you a good foundation to be pretty tough. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. So then you were a roofer? I was a roofer. And then? Well, then, you know, walking into the pub with the lads, everybody used to laugh at me saying, you're looking at houses. And I'm like, I am going to buy a house. Okay, and, and you were what, 18, 19? 18, 19, yeah. And I remember the lads all laughing and I'm saying, right, okay, well, let's see who laughs when I buy my first house. And I bought my first house for 30 grand or 34 grand. And like the, people will say you're lucky in life, but hard work meeting opportunity is luck. Yeah. The, harder you, opportunity. the harder you work, the luckier you get, says Gary Player, the famous yeah. golfer. And what happened to me, I bought my house and the IRA called their ceasefire. And then the next thing, the loyalists joined in and then our amazing country found peace. And the house that I bought at 30 grand or 34 grand tripled, then quadrupled. And the lads in the pub weren't laughing anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, told you fucking so, guys. <laughs> so, and you know, that was the start of it then for me. You know, I done an equity release, went into the property game, started working all over the UK. Things came and went. I've had an amazing life. Um, I, had, I was married, it didn't work out. I have a daughter from that marriage, Farah, mm. who's my world. Uh, and things got bad in 2007, I went to Dubai. I'd done really, really well over there. And then when I came back, nobody really knew me. Um, but when I lived in Dubai, I lived in service departments in the Grosvenor house. Now, when I say Dubai, it's not what everybody sees on Instagram. Okay. There was Dubai Marina, there were seven towers, that was it, Sheikhside Road, 
Noth no downtown, zero. There was a gro there was a Jumeirah Beach and the Burj. That was it. And we were doing property deals and land deals back 15 years ago. So when people say they're into property, right? I all like loads of people are saying they're into property. So some people just have two properties and they rent one, but they're telling me they're into property and they made the money. Mm. Tell me what that really means for you. The way people talk about property. The like way that. you, what it was for you. Well, we were doing we were doing land deals. Okay. We were doing back to back land deals sometimes with not having the money to complete, and okay. you were hoping it was going to go through in Dubai. Okay. And it just kept working and working and working, but then I decided I need to come home. I need to spend, I need to be a dad. My daughter Farah is mm. my life, and so is my eldest daughter Rihanna. So I came home and I I just completely loved living in the Grosvenor House in Dubai because one part of the hotel is a hotel, yeah. the other part was service departments. Okay. So I decided I wanted to bring a service department idea back to... And what is a service department? Service department is just like a hotel room. Okay. But it's a gorgeous luxury apartment. You have all your mod cons, you, you know, you can home to home living. Um, and some people would do Airbnb with things like that. But okay. I had it in my head, I'm going to do a completely different business model. I'm going to do blocks. So the whole block is a service department. All the different apartment types, you'll have a reception just like a hotel. I knew in my head exactly what I was going to do. Okay. And I can't because I just wanted to duplicate where I'd lived in Dubai. Okay. And um, I remember. But you wanted to live back here, but in that luxury st lifestyle. Well, no, I wanted to bring that luxury lifestyle yeah. to the corporate, to the business trade. To, so when business travellers were coming, they could stay in these apartments. Yeah. Leisure guests could enjoy the experience that I had in Dubai. Um, so I, I started walking the streets of Belfast, walking into every estate agents. Walking in the, so then I went, it's time to put boots in the ground. Started going to Liverpool, Birmingham, London, Scotland, Glasgow, everywhere. And literally just walking around, knocking on doors. Boots on the them. ground. You know, it was like rapping the door, right, guys, what's going on? Bang, door closed, email. The more hands you shake, the more calls you make, the more money you make. But I was told no for a year. And at one stage, so moving forward slightly, mm. I had met this amazing woman. So, oh, and tell that, us and the that's story. Dolores. Let's tell it. Tell this story in the middle of all this, but tell this story. Oh, so well, lovely. well, so going back, so I had I'd been told no for a year. And, you know, I just people were saying to me, like, when are you going to ever, ever give up? And I'm like, I'm never giving up. I don't tap out. It's just never going to happen. And, you know, the whole thing about mentoring and, you know, and all this, it's about trusting the process. Now, you can achieve a goal today, it could take a week. Mine took a year. Yeah. But it turned up. Um, a friend of mine called me from Savile's estate agents and says, um, Marathon's coming to town, the New York Hedge Fund. They know everything about you. We've lined the deal up. This is going to happen for you. And I'm like, let's have it. And I remember being in DW Sports and he called me and says, they've said no to a five-year deal. And I was devastated. And he says, but they've said yes to a three. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and I just went nuts in the middle of the gym. <laughs> and then my hotel business was born then. Um, and then since then, we're, been in, we're in Belfast, Liverpool, Newcastle, Manchester, Middlesbrough, Dundee. And if you put your mind to it and you don't give up, you will achieve your goals. So it started off just here. Where did it start? Belfast, Belfast first. Belfast was the first one. Then Newcastle, Liverpool. Now it's Manchester, Middlesbrough, Dundee. And we're opening in Bradford. Oh my God. And it's just unfolded. But it, that resilience from growing up in Belfast Stood just made me, you. I'm never giving up, ever. And then it turned out and it worked. And that's, like, I have clients at the minute. And I would say many time, many meetings, if you want to, they achieve this goal. I'm at 17, keep going. Because at meeting 21, you're going to get your yes. Because that's what happened. You have to keep going and going and going. And do you think young people are missing that now? Of course. Yeah. We're in a mentality now where, <sighs> I tried my best. What do you mean? You tried your best. Step up. Do it. Yeah. There's a whole difference in saying, I tried my best and actually finishing something. Finish something. Be proud of it. Yeah. Turn up every day. Be disciplined. Motivations yeah. for the week. Be a disciplined warrior. And, and in a world now, if you have any type of mental toughness, you're going to dominate. Everybody thinks it's okay to give up. It's not. It's not. It's not. Let's go back to being tough. And do you know what I learned from you? The one thing that stuck in my mind, and I do remember hearing it before, but time between you and the task. I'm really working on that now. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. It's like, I used to say, I'll send that email, just send it now. Well, I, I, you know, and that's a great thing that you've brought up. I never put time between me and a task. So if we're talking right now and something comes into my head, apart from being on a podcast, yeah. I'll say, stop, hold on a second, and I'll send the email there and then. 
Yeah. If there's a phone call I need to make and it's going to be an uncomfortable one, I will do it instantly. Because the more time you put between you and that phone call, three hours down the line, you're going to be like, I really don't want to make that call. Yeah. If you do it instantly, it's done. If you send the email, it's done. If I'm doing a deal with you, I'll have sent the email, you're on the phone, I'll make sure you've got it, email me back, we're both on the same page, it's finished. It's done. It's done, it's complete, no spinning plates. The task is finished in its entirety. Yeah. Never put time between you and a task. That was the one thing that yeah, I'm Yeah, I'll do that with. later. Yeah. Really? And do you it won't, nice. Yeah, you won't do it later. So that's something I'm really and working on. see your on. level of productivity. Yeah. Like what I get done in a day, I would say genuinely somebody will do in a week. Tuesday, I was in Belfast, I landed in London, had meetings in London. Then I went to Manchester, I worked at 11 o'clock. Wednesday, I woke up, I was in Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester, and out the 11.30 last night with clients. Woke up this morning at four, been on Zoom with the client at five, flew home from Manchester, went to the office in Belfast, and now I'm lucky enough to see you guys. But come here, do you have to Where's the excuse? <laughs> like... um, a Sunday, well, I was going to say a Sunday, I usually chill it, but the minute I'm doing three and four hours cardio on a Sunday, because I'm training for an event, um, yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, because I'm like, sometimes like, you know, because I'm on your mentoring program now, yeah. right? And I find these things really and good thank you me for coming on here. Because I meet good people and it, it helps me with my discipline, right? But like the early morning, so I get up early and I was always up. I'm an early riser anyway, Well, I have been the last few years. But sometimes by four o'clock, I have to say, Tom, I'm tired. I'm tired. Said and get I'm those like, lows, yeah, like. I, I get them, and I'm like, oh my god, or six o'clock in the evening, you know, and I have a family and stuff like that. It is tough. Is it your in your DNA just to be that high energy, or do you think it's a mixture of your yeah, diet, yeah. your exercise, well, good sleep? Yeah, it's the whole package. But you know, my wife would say to me sometimes, like, how do you just keep going? Yeah. But then the thing I would say to anybody and you is, I didn't wake up that guy. I built that guy, so I built him to the point where he's used that now. You know, yeah. where I, I can get away with three, four hours sleep. Now, you know, some people might say, no, you need six or you need eight. Yeah. You might. I don't. Um, but I, I built them over a period of time. I didn't okay. just wake up some dude that could get up at four o'clock. Right, OK. So you weren't always like that. So when you were younger... Well, I probably enjoyed my sleep like everybody else. Like, yeah. I, I remember I was a doorman in a nightclub and I remember coming home Sunday mornings with a slap for 12 or 14 hours. Yeah. Because I'd probably done... A 24 hour day. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had four jobs when I was, you know, in yeah. my 20s. But, you know, it's... I just I can keep going and going and like forty nine, I'm forty nine years old, it's just a number. You know, I can You have I'll, to think I'll like I'll go that as toe you get to older. toe with yeah. anybody fitness wise like. I you know what I laugh at? Young people are knackered. They're so tired all the time. I'm like, tired from what? Yeah, but you know, my sixteen year old as she would replicate me, she, like the other day she says, Daddy, I done an R in the stir climber. I'm like, Yes, Farah. Yeah. And then she'll go to dance, then she'll study. Yeah, great. You know, so she's just like But that's a great role model for her. Yeah, because I'm so proud she's of her. looking at you saying, Well, you know, he's forty nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and he can do it. She's not saying that, yeah. But yeah, there is no excuse. You know, yeah. my wife my wife trains twice a day, seven days a week as well. Yeah, there is no excuse. Now I'm I'm a I'm a big believer in fitness because I think like running a business is tough. You have to, it's long days, it's long, you have to be physically fit for your body to be able to withstand yeah. the long days. Yeah, funny, I said that to a client yesterday, who is gonna be huge mm. in, in what he's doing. And I said, but we need to see the 20 million pound version of you. Cause that guy is four stone later, he only eats healthy. Yeah. I know you only drink water, but he, he only sleeps four or five hours a day. He's a different version, but you know, he's super fit. And the, the, the guy I was talking to is an amazing man, but his fitness needs fixed. Yeah. Because to be working at that level, you need you to, be to be like physically a, fit. A, like, an athlete. Yeah, because last year I kind of, I was always in fitness, always in the gym, mm. always running, always doing something. And last year I just focused on work and I stopped all that. No way, man. Right, and then I started feeling really tired. Fitness is my life. Yeah. Like, it really is. Do you think you have like an addictive personality? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and then recently I've been diagnosed with ADHD. Have you? And my I wife well says to me, it. I knew you were on the fucking yeah. spectrum. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The high energy. You know if people are trying I to I just obsess it, on something, but it's, a, it. it's great. But then I'll go on it, on it, on it, and then it's done. Then I'll go on something, it's done. Do you have to have a focus? So... You know the way you might have a focus, say someone's starting off, they're like, I want to reach a million. But then you get a million, then you want four, then you want six, then you want eight, then you want mm. something else. Do you have to have a goal to drive you? I believe I am the architect of my own life. And now that I've found these amazing tools and the laws of the universe, and I know exactly how it works, 
I know exactly what to do. I have boxes of journals and every single thing in them's turned up. So, you know, like one of the things uh, in 2021, I can send you the YouTube video. I'm sitting in my, my previous house and I say out loud on YouTube, I'm going to go from magazines to TV and movie scenes. I'm here to do it all. And I'd, I was listening to motivational stuff, so I thought, I'm going to start writing this. So then I thought, this mantra sentence is really turning me on. I like this. Yeah. So I'm going to adapt this into a goal. So then I thought, I want to be in a film. So that so then it's always always pushing, always going, always in a direction. So I called a guy called Keith Bishop, who's a friend of mine. He's Johnny Depp's PR manager. Okay. And I says, Bish, it's Tom. And he says, he calls me the main man. Don't know why. I like, and I says, look, I want to be in a film. And he says, okay, I'll connect you. But then I called him 50 times in a month to the point where he went, okay, I've got your point. I'm going to connect you. Because I'll, I'll just not give up. Okay, I love it. Calling somebody 50 times to me is normal. Really? In a day sometimes, 50 Stop, times. Stop, Tom, no really? Problem. The embarrassing bone's been removed from my body. <laughs> So then he connected me with an amazing guy called Terry Stone, who's an actor and a film director who makes all these Rise of Food Soldier films. Okay. So um, then me and Terry became friends. Terry's on my mentoring program. Yeah. And then Terry says to me, right, okay, you're in a movie. So um, at Christmas hour, I acted in my first film. And now oh I'm in God. the next three. So it, No it, way. Yeah, yeah. And, and had it, you done acting before? No. And you know when people, like I would always say to people, get comfortable being uncomfortable. So I'm standing there and I'm like, okay. And I just, I, I knew what my lines were. And then this wee voice slipped into my head and went, what are you doing? You can't do this. And I just, that was self-doubt. And I just closed the door on it and went, let's have it. Stepped up, done my part, done it one cut. And now Did that you? I've done that, I'm like, let's have this. So, so you felt, I'm like that. If I do something once, then I think I'm an expert. But you know, people don't realise, I do all these things. So the kid, like the guy or the girl growing up in Belfast or Dublin or yeah. Liverpool go, if Tom can do this, I can do this. Yeah. It's not trying to be the big guy. It's just to try and inspire somebody else. That a normal guy from the streets, if he can do it, why can I not? And that's really a lot, why a lot of the time I'm doing stuff. But also I think you can't give up on yourself. And a lot of people do, particularly as they get older. I agree. And their dreams die. Yeah. And like I'm going after everything. Yeah. St like... I'll never stop, like, ever. That's so admirable because I think life can get you down or you can have lows and you can have rejections and no's there, and yeah. tough times and and then you Had all of it. trying to overcome that and still stay positive. But you know what lives on the other side of massive adversity? The life of your wildest dreams. Yeah. And everybody else taps out and they don't even get to see what it's like. And it's I, tough. It's it's not tough. It's not tough. It's a mindset. Change thing. your words and change your words. Yeah, it's yeah. not tough. It's just about changing your mind and saying, like, our, when we were talking the other night, we were we were on. So we've this program, and every Monday and Thursday we have calls, but yep. sometimes it could be just one thing you say, and it was like where you said with the negative mindset, doubt comes in, and you just have to say no. Hundred percent. Because if you feed that doubt, yeah. you'll go down a rabbit hole. It'll become so strong, and when you start thinking about something, you can clothe that thought and turn it into a reality. And yeah. that really bad negative thing is going to unfold and turn up in your life. So yeah. why not flip it and turn to think about something amazing? So your subconscious mind's always thinking about something good about yourself. Yeah. Like it's all you know. It really is about self love, and telling your subconscious amazing things about you. Yeah. And, you know, and why you, would you not? And but then that isn't something that you just find. Yeah. You have to teach yourself. You have to, you have to script yourself. And you know when I'm saying to people, amazing people like yourself, write a mantra, write stuff amazing about yourself. It takes two or three weeks to kick in, and then you're like, I am this guy, or I am this girl. Yeah. And it really is a mindset shift. But you can control your thoughts. You can, but no one teaches us this. So where, no, when school, the, schools, school doesn't all teach anybody yeah, it's this, all wrong. Yeah. and like particularly. A generation where we grew up it was like I was taught like not to be like boastful or full of yourself mm -hmm. or like that wasn't something that was ever ingrained in me it was like don't be getting too big for your boots mm -hmm. now like we shouldn't Fuck, be teaching you had confidence in Belfast yeah you'd have got maybe clipped yeah you know, yeah so so when did you start we were always told don't put your head above the parapet yeah because you might have got it shot off yeah and you really might have oh absolutely you yeah because you were in a community where the whole community was controlled and it was just a way, it was just a way of life then. How did you overcome that and, and develop this well, mindset? You know, I remember my mummy, when I was a kid, used to say to me, what did we get you saw in the movies? I was always just away somewhere really? else thinking. Yeah. Okay. And I always wanted bigger things. And I remember one of the times my friend says to me, are you not happy with what you've got? And I says, you don't get it. 
it's the hustle, it's the push, it's the shove, it's to keep going. Yeah. It's never about what I ever have. It's like even money, and money's, money's an amazing byproduct that comes with success. But you're not doing it for the money now, you're just doing it. Like for me, I want to help people on this journey yeah. of self-development and public speaking and see if you're putting your hand out and pulling somebody else up and helping them. There's nothing more rewarding. Yeah, to see the yeah. success that they get and the yeah. change in people. Like the buzz you get from helping somebody else. Yeah. Surely we should all be doing that. Absolutely. And I think like the, the mindset shift that I've had where I'm focusing on goals and I never did before and I'm focusing on what I want, not what I don't want. And I'm focused on trying mm. to stay positive. Like just times that things slip into my mind. That's why being in a mentoring group like that helps. Because mm. if you're having a shit day, you go on the call on the Monday, yeah. you're surrounded by positive people. You're like, yeah, I can do this. You get kind of food again and filled back up again and off you go then for the next week. Yeah, and you know, the thing for me in the mentoring program is I want everybody to continue to practice it and have a universal toolbox for the rest of their life. Because if you stay in it, you will always win. The biggest battle you always fight is you against you. Yeah. But like I remember, like my daughter's turning six, 17, wow. 15 years ago, I was sitting in my wife's house and Dolores says to me, do you love yourself? And I'm like, so this is the guy who was a doorman and from the street. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean love myself? And she says, well, do you love you, Tom? And I'm like, no. She says, well, you're never going to be able to love me, correct, until you love yourself. And then she was right. I started understanding about loving me. Yeah. Couldn't tell my mate, sis. Yeah. <laughs> started reading everything yeah. about, you know, the universe, all the connections, all the different laws. And then my whole life just changed, you know. And what, well, if, we're, if you could simplify the laws of the universe to make people understand it, to help people understand a little bit more about how it works. Well, yeah, the bottom line is this. Like, me and you are either having a really good day or a bad day. Mm. So you're just the same as an old radio transistor. You're either on a really bad frequency listening to really rubbish music, or you're, like, or you're on Cool F, or you're on New York FM, and it's pimp central. You're on the highest vibration, the best day of your life. Yeah. And all it takes is that simple tuning onto the right frequency. So you're either on a low or a high frequency. Okay. What one do you choose? High. And you know, there's times for me, and, and this is something I always say, because it's the truth, I'll wake up full of energy, but full of anxiety, full of fear. Okay. I'll, I'll look at my wife and I'll be like, oh my God, I love her. I'll wake up in her home, beautiful home, and I own it, no, no mortgage. So I have no worries, but fear's kicking in. And I know I need to find myself and get back on the right frequency. And there's times it'll take me three or four hours to get there, and nobody even knows by the time I've hit the office. So I'll do cardio, doesn't work. I'll write my goals in gratitude, doesn't work. Yeah. It might be a photograph or a video of Dolores and the kids, and then I'm just back straight on the frequency. Okay. So you have to find your triggers. Having a, the point of saying that, having a bad day is a choice. You can't flick yourself and go right on the right frequency. But you have to be taking action. Well, you have to be aware. Yeah. Once uh, you've got awareness, so have A in your head for awareness instead of anxiety. Okay. Uh, you can do the mindset shift and move on to another frequency and enjoy your day. And the thing about it is, I suppose, it's important to, like, people will look at you now and say, oh, yeah, brilliant, great, you're always in good form. So it's good that you've said, sometimes no, I not. wake up with anxiety, no, sometimes I wake up feeling Well, even good. driving down here, some tractors holding me back and I'm about to kick off. <laughs> and then I went, hold on, I'm out of the office, I'm out of my head, I'm in a different environment. Let's appreciate the beauty of Ireland here. Completely chill, drop down four gears and relax. And that tractor started doing me a favour then because I started going down a few levels and relaxing. Yeah. Instead of trying to get round him and kill myself. Yeah, yeah. It's just looking at things differently. It is. It really, but then really that's, is. I don't mean to say this. It's probably came with AIDS too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and now I just feel that I'm get, I try and get better daily. And of course I fall and make mistakes and, you know, everybody has arguments. But mm. it's always about turning up. It's always about being the best version of yourself. Yeah. All of the time. You know, you want to be an inspiration to somebody else. You don't want to be the person who walks in the room and flattens it because, flip me, what's wrong with him? Oh, or yeah. With him? Yeah, and you can feel the energy when someone yeah. comes in. Yeah. Like I bumped into a guy in Liverpool a few years ago. He says, I've been trying to call you. I mean, yeah, I blocked your number. You're toxic. I don't want you in my life. My solicitor will deal with you. Thanks very much. And walk past him. Me blocking him was self preservation for me because every time I spoke to him, he made me very angry. So I just thought, I need him out. Blocked. Yeah, because you and I were talking about this, about negative people in your life. I just cut them out. Just like that? On a heartbeat. On a heartbeat. Because why would I give somebody else permission to affect me? Yeah. It's not on. I have enough going on. I don't need that in my life. 
I really don't need it. And you just block them. It's and appalling. Tell me, when, you, when you're managing a team, right? So when you started mm. your business, it was just you and you had the idea. Then you built a team around you, yeah. okay, which is amazing. But I think that's the important thing too. Build a team around you when you can afford to do it. Like yeah. We've had that chat. Yeah. When I opened my hotel business, I was a main head receptionist. I was the head maintenance guy. I was the head social media guy and hadn't got one clue. I yeah. was the head of ops. I was the head of everything. Yeah. Same and then way. as I could afford, I started adding people. Yeah. But, you know, people don't see that point where I was in the trenches doing everything. The other bit that people don't see with me is sometimes I'll put my training gear on at night and I'll drive around all the hotel car parks in whatever city that I'm sleeping in. And I'll find any van or car that has a trademark or branding on it. And I get out and photograph every single car in all the hotel car parks. And then my sales team call them and it's the next day. And I'll fire 70 photographs through to a group chat. And then my sales team are like, oh, Tom's a complete champion here. Look at the leads he's given. So anybody staying in a hotel, wow. I'm taking them to stay in my hotel. You know, so, you know, it's about constantly outgrafting. And see, when you're putting out hustle, the universe sees, this guy wants this. Yeah. And then things keep turning up in your life. It's no fluke. Hard work pays off, period. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I think too many people are waiting for it to come to them. Yeah. But it really is about, it is about that. You have to be up early and you have to be out. Like I, I always say, meeting people at meetings with other business people, like you have to leave your house, office and get out and meet people. Big time. Yeah. Working Plus from home, I think, yeah, is, a, is a disgrace. Everybody needs to be back if they're not. Yeah. And you know. out meeting people at networking events, Big join time. groups. Like that's really, really important. Plus the social media side. I know you're really good on social all of media. It. Has yeah. to be all of it. Yeah, has to be all like, the time. I'll network at an airport. I'll have some of my business. I, I met a, a lovely lady this morning getting onto the flight and she says to me, what do you do? And I said, I'm a mentor with this and that. And I said, there's my business card. Send me a WhatsApp and I'll connect with you. Why, would you, why would you not? I'd be shy. No I'd chance. be shy. Like, but what's the worst somebody could say? No. Yeah. And right. any time I give a woman a business card, I always tell my wife so nobody can ever say, oh, I've seen Tom giving a woman a card. Yeah, he told me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's something then that I, I find difficult with men as well. Sometimes, like, if I say to somebody, hey, do you want to meet for a coffee? They might think, I'm like, oh, Jesus, no, I actually yeah, mean... Like I can, yeah, I can say yes for all the men are creeps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you, you know, if you're out there and you're a guy and there's a good looking woman, you're supposed to be doing business, not creeping on exactly. somebody. Exactly, exactly. You know, and I, I don't get it. I'm happily married. My wife is my world. Yeah. I can start creeping on somebody. Yeah, so really, but I have to get braver like that. I have to get braver. But then also the be braver cards. knocking somebody back and saying, "No, I oh, want to make different business." Yeah, yeah that's you know? it. I say that now, but like yeah. it's something you have to be careful of. But the business, I never carry my business cards, and I never try and do business when I'm not in a business environment. But I should. Of course. I should always. But you're always networking, like standing in a petrol station. If I see something on your blazer, and I'll be like, "You work for HBO, really? Where are you guys staying?" Oh, I've got 120 apartments around the street. Seriously. And like one of the things for me... I love it. I love that. So during COVID, there was a couple of special things that happened. You know, it, it was terrible what happened in our in the industry. You know, we lost yeah. six million quid, I think, in the first two weeks on bookings. The world stopped. You know, and it was a dangerous time. You know, it was, it was the most serious trading pattern, dangerous from the Second World War. Nobody knew what was going to happen. But then Boris Johnson done a couple of things correct. One, he let service departments stay open yeah. so we could cater for essential industries and stuff. Hotels closed, it is what it is. But, you know, I wasn't going to ask my sales team to go and go across the UK to try and get business. So I started getting the Stana line. Sometimes I would have got a jet. But I went all over the UK, kept going to all our cities. And the thing that he done well, the Prime Minister at the time, was he let construction continue. Mm. So I thought, right, I'm going to fill all our buildings and I've got a method to do it. And my method to do it was donuts, right? So, and you may think this is crazy, but I went to Tesco's, I would have bought 20 bags, 25 bags of donuts, and I would have walked into every building and said, who's the foreman? Why? I'm the foreman. My name's Tom, I'm from Ireland, and I brought you a present today. The next thing, the guys were softened, what's this? Bag of donuts for your cup of tea. Do us a favour. When contractors are coming to stay, and they're coming from different parts of the UK, can you WhatsApp me and let me know? I'm going to hit you twice a week. I'm going to call you every Monday and every Friday. I'll either be me or my team. Oh, Tom, thanks very much, man. And like, I had one of my sales guys out recently in Manchester. And when I walked on, this guy's called Tom as well. And I says, Tom, tell him how we met each other. He says, Tom brought us donuts. <laughs> so the next thing, me bringing these donuts onto these huge construction sites, some of them like two or three billion pound of property being built yeah. in Manchester. 
we had all these contractors WhatsApp and us calling us, and we filled all our buildings. Then what did we do during COVID? We went from 250 apartments, and I went, let's have this. And we expanded to 550. My wife says, you're going to expand in a global pandemic. And I said, let's have it. Because I didn't want to look back two years from now, back then, and go, I should have done this, I should have done that. Just done all of it. You just done it. And we were lucky, you know, that certain things had happened. And we had all the, the business coming to us. And then the next thing, we were full. So, but, but it took... How do you get fear out of your mind? So when everybody else was saying fear, like, you know, everybody, nobody knew what was going to happen. When is it going to lift? Da, 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 da. People were frightened to move, spend money, invest, do things Well, yeah, like the that. thing for me was I was practising government guidelines. Of course I was, but I wasn't watching the news. So I was completely not, in fact, I was not infected or effected by it. Okay. I didn't want to know all the madness. I didn't want to see all the stuff going on in Italy, which, which was so scary. Yeah. You know, my grandmother, we had to stop her watching the news. My wife stopped watching it. Yeah, the kids start watching, watching it. it. Yeah. So then that mad hysteria couldn't affect me. Um, on social media and amongst our WhatsApp groups and work, I was only putting out positive messages saying, this is only temporary. We're in this together and all this type of stuff. Yeah. And one of the times I said, fuck COVID. Yeah. I'm having a war against COVID. Let's have it. And I meant it. So, you know, I had a duty of care to all my staff too yeah. to, get, to help them through it and to put food on their table. So we just went for it and it worked. And, but it comes from the top down. So when we think about, so you're always in this positivity, right? You're in good, high energy, trying yeah, every day. There's days I have to fade it to get on to yeah, it, but yeah. But yeah, so when you, with your team, how do you keep the team at that level? Or how do you pick team members that are going to be on that level with you? Any advice for us? Yeah, well, you know, I think if you're interviewing, you definitely don't pick the, be the, the best of a bad bunch. So if you interview 10 people, and, oh, well, that guy or that girl was okay interview another 10 right. until you get the right one. Okay. Like I've made that mistake too many times. Yeah, I have, I have. I would rather stay in the trenches until the right guy or girl turns up than giving the job to somebody who's not going to be able to cut it. Oh, yeah. And I'm lucky, like my senior commercial guy, Andrew Donaldson, guy's a machine. And he's got this mad connection. He just has everybody on lockdown and everybody, excuse the word, lockdown. Yeah. But I mean, every, he just has everybody connected and business coming in all the time. And when you've got key people like that, it's about looking after them too. Yeah. And, yeah. um, making them feel that you, you care about them. And valued. It, yeah. yeah. But the thing, that's a really good point. And my daughter's the chief operating officer now. You were it? saying that? Yeah, and she's a machine. Like, I'm so proud of her. And is she only 6, 17? No, it's the other one. Oh, it's okay. my other daughter. Okay. Um, so my other daughter, Rihanna, has a master's in international law. Yeah. She's another female warrior. Real tough cookie. Really gorgeous child. Uh, and the lovely thing about Rihanna is she's having a baby. So on the 12th of July, I'm going to, well, she's doing the 12th of July, yeah. I'm going to be a granddad. Oh my God. So like I'm buzzing, me and my wife Dolores are like so yeah. happy. You know, yeah. I can't believe it. So, so that's really important, I think, your family values for you. Like we were yeah, talking about this earlier. Why are we doing what we're doing if we don't look after our family? Was that I'm, on, I'm on this hustle for them. Yeah. I want to give them the life of their wildest dreams. It's not about me, it's about them. All of it's about them. And was there a time where you focused too much on work and not on them? Very much so, yeah. About yeah. 14, 15 months ago. Like if I looked at a circle on a pie chart, I would say three to five percent was the time I was giving towards my wife and kids. Disgusting. And I had a wake up call. Yeah. And now, I, like I, my weekends and everything belong to Dolores and the kids. Yeah. Is it that you just say, right, non-negotiable, Saturday and Sunday, kids, family. No matter, on a Sunday, the th a big thing for me too is I do not look at my phone. My phone will go away for, from six to 12 hours, excuse me, locked away. And see the detox you get from it, not yeah. being on that phone, not being caught on a reel on social media. Yeah. Like I may be all over social media, but I'm never on it. Okay. And see just locking that phone away. Like I remember the first time I'd done it, it was, oh my goodness, I'm wanting to go and pick it up. See, baby, by about week three or four, you're opening your drinks cabinet, you're setting it in, you're like, oh, and my whole life is just a different level. Yeah, because the phone is addictive and oh. it's such a big distraction. Try it. Try it on a Sunday, put it yeah. away, and we'll see the difference you feel coming into work on a Monday. You feel so refreshed. Yeah. And I know the difference. Like, a few weeks ago, I had to work on a Sunday because something happened. When I'm working on a Monday, I wasn't my full self because I didn't have that disengagement. Yeah, because, like, social media phones... All the technology is it's brilliant, all control. but it's control. Because I can look at my emails now anywhere, it's great. If I'm here, I can check in with work, mm. check in. On, but then it's a course. 
mm. because there is no downtime. Yeah, even like well, I was flying internationally in February to Miami. I was walking up and down the plane on my phone, completely connected the whole time. But yeah. when I was away for work, I worked. But when I'm in family time, I don't want to be on it. And that's the discipline. That's the discipline. Yeah, because you know the nice, you know, like if I'm out for date night with my wife, sometimes you see people and you're like, "Yo, that's your wife. That's your husband. What are you yeah, doing on your phone?" Yeah, I know. Like when I'm out in date night, I'm staring into my wife's eyes, telling I her love I love her. I love her. Or she's saying to me, "By the way, we need to do this. We need to do that." And we're connected. And you know, Dolores said to me the other day, and I think it's an amazing thing. These mobiles were formed to connect people, but now they're disconnecting people. They are disconnecting people. Like couples, I see them. I'm guilty of it by times. It's terrible. But well, so have I. I'm yeah, guilty of it. But we, like we, on date night, like it's no chance. No, if I'm out with someone and I hate it, I'm with them. Because if yeah. I can't be on my phone and here and here with you, yeah. we can't be in two places. You need to once. be in the present moment, yeah. listening to somebody, looking into their yeah. eyes. And I think that's what we're missing. Yeah, it's, big it's, time. And people, the art of conversation has left. Yeah. You know. Or just sitting still. Like, yeah. you know, do you know what I think is gas? When we, when I was growing up, if I ha had arranged to meet you here today, we just say, four o'clock, meet you here, done. Now everybody's like, are you still showing up? Are you still going to be there? Like, it was just, yeah. we had to, because yeah. I couldn't reach you to cancel it. So people just showed up for of each course. other. Yeah. And people just arrived. But now people are double checking. They can cancel at the last minute, say, I'm not coming, la, la, yeah. la, la. Plus, kids are missing how to shake hands with someone, how to look someone in the eye, how to be present in a room, mm. how to have presence in a room. Yeah. And young kids are missing this because they're on the phone the whole time. Mm. And all they're seeing, they think this is real. This I is know, real. I know. And, you know, anybody out there who has a business and it's on social media, if you're not getting enough likes, so what? I remember not having a phone. I remember there was no social media. Yeah. Or even anybody on social media hating on you. That can only affect you if you give it permission to. You know, every, I think yeah. everybody needs to step back and go, OK, social media should be used as a tool to enhance your business, enhance your brand and a product. It shouldn't be there to control you and go, I only got 17 likes. I can't believe it. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah, and people are really affected by that. because wow, they're like, that goes right over my head. Yeah, you can't care. And then people hating on you. Line them up. Yeah. It's yeah. part of success. <laughs> yeah. It's part of success, but honestly, line them all up. You know, and the more successful you get, the more of them coming out. It is what it is. Yeah, you just don't even take... Not a millisecond. You don't even listen. Look, Not a look. millisecond. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, you who got the would time, take the time to sit and yeah, hate on me? Good to luck. hate somebody and send shit. Like, I can never understand it. Yeah, but never. really, they're obsessed by you because that's why they're hating on you. Yeah, I know. Or, yes. Yeah. The amount of people that you see looking at every single post, yeah. every single thing. Yeah, I see that's, it. I see it all the time. But listen, tell us the story about how you met your wife. I love yeah. this. I know it's so, a bit um, romantic, but like, it is important. My I little girl it. was two, I'm um, Farah, and uh, I decided I wanted to like step up and be like a really good dad. Um, I was a good dad, but I wanted to do something better, you know. Mm. I suppose it's my head, progress, like, what can we do more? Yeah, yeah. So I, I remember I went down to uh, travel agents in Belfast, because that's what you used to do, by yes, the way. Yes, you did, Walked yeah. in and bought tickets. <laughs> yeah. um, and this was 15 years ago, um, just coming up to 15 years ago, and I bought two tickets to go to Euro Disney, me and my wee two-year-old, and I went into the airport in her prom, and uh, so I let her out of the prom. She started playing with this other little kid, another girl. So I seen the kids playing, I'm like, great. So then I looked over and seen this woman, Sitting and I'm like, wow, she's gorgeous, that girl's gorgeous. Yeah. So I started talking to her and like I was just hanging on every word. I, I just had never, this had never happened to me before. Right. And, you know, I've been a doorman, so, you know, yeah. I've been around. <laughs> You've been yeah. around yeah. women, yeah. like, okay. yeah, yeah, you weren't. So, and I, but I called my best friend in Liverpool and I said, Paul, I said, lad, I think I fell in love with this girl in the airport. He says, don't be such a creep. And I said, I'm telling you, <laughs> something's <laughs> happened. The bomb's dropped. I don't know what it is, but something's happened. And he says, there's something wrong with you. And he put the phone down. And I remember uh, the plane was called for Paris. And I says, look, lovely meeting you. We're going to go. We're going to Euro Disney. He says, really? We're going to Euro Disney? I'm like, you're kidding me. I'm like, what's going on here? So I get on the back seat of the plane. Seat 27, A and B or whatever it was. My birthday's at 27. So I'll never forget it. Put far in the seat. Give her a toy and say, daddy, be back in a second. And I walked the whole way down that flight. Elbow and pensioners and stuff to get down. <laughs> And the next thing I turned up and Dolores is sitting there and she's like, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't know what it is, but there's something happening here. I says, I can just feel it. And she says, what do you mean? I says, 
I just, I really enjoyed meeting you. Can I please ask you a favour? You've been to Disneyland before. I haven't. Can I take you out for dinner tonight? And she went, you're weirding me out. But she's laughing. People are trying to get on the plane and get past. I'm like, will you fuck off? I'm asking this girl out. <laughs> so she says to me, um, hold on a second. So she says to Rihanna, Rihanna, it's your birthday. What would you like to do? And Rihanna was just turning eight. And Rihanna says, I really like Farah, mommy. So she says, okay. She says, you've got your yes. And I'm like, yes. And I walked back up the plane. And I met them for dinner that night. And the rest is history. We spent four days meeting each other in Disneyland. And in my wedding speech, excuse my language, I said, thank fuck for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> because it changed my whole life. And I've been through thick and thin. I've been through hell. And she's still here. And now uh, she's my world. I love that, though. You just were so brave. Yeah, but then, you... you know, one of the things, that, like I, I would do speeches, doing public speaking. And one of the things I would always say is take massive action. Yeah. So my massive action was... I'm going to regret this the rest of my life or I'm walking down the plane. Bang, walk down the plane. And is that how you flip it in your mind yeah, let's when go. you want to do something? Straight there. Just say, right, I can Didn't put time between me and a task. Just yeah. done it. You know, because if I wouldn't have done it, I always would have been. I wonder what would have happened. Yeah. I'm not that guy. I just get shit done. And so many people do that. That's what I'm trying to implement into my life now. Don't do try it, then. Do you know what yeah. trying is? What did I say the other night? Trying is lying. Yeah. Because if you really want to do it, you'll do it. I really wanted to walk up that flight. And now that woman's my world, I'm married to her. Check that out, you know, yeah. it's, it's a fact. Yeah, I love it. I but, and what's it, and here, it. in business, doing that, what's the worst somebody could say? No. no. And then go back in again, because business is all about turning that no into a yes. That's, I think, I needed a dose of that one. Yeah. And on your mentoring programme, that's what I was getting. It's like, like I would never be, have been brave enough to go up to somebody with my business card in an airport to be mortified. Oh my God, what if they said no? So inappropriate, but it's not. No, it's Worst thing not. they can say is no, so what? It's not, I think it's about, if you're going up with the right intentions, yeah. you're not a creep, yeah. and you're being personable and nice, and you have somebody's best interests, and you've got love in your heart, and you're a stand-up guy or girl with integrity, go and say it yourself. Yeah, and would you do that everywhere? All the time. No like, I was, I was with two clients the other day in Manchester. I live in this gorgeous complex in Deansgate, and a guy walked past, and I said to the guy, like, What's wrong? He says, you know, I'm scared of cold calling and stuff. And I said, see that guy there? He needs to be on my mentoring program. He says, well, wow, that's great. I says, watch this. Bang, just walked up to the guy in the middle of the place. Never spoke to him before in my life. Took his number. And I said, I'll send you all the material through. I know you're the guy for my program. Sat back down. Like, I said, where did you get the courage to do that? I'm like, confidence is like strength and wealth and happiness. Confidence you need to work on every day too. Yeah. You know, you have to constantly put in the work into confidence. You don't wake up one day that able to do that. But it's, you have to do it. If you're serious about business, you need to put yourself out there. And I loved what you said to me there a few weeks ago where you were like, if your life depended on it, would you do it? Yes, I would. Well, that's it. Yes, that's, I would. So your life, I, act like but that. I, I live all day like that. I will go after things so intensely. It's like my life depends on it. Yeah. Like so at it. Yeah. And, and it's not the like thing. you need the money. It's not like it's not the money thing. It's the, it's the, just the buzz of the whole. Oh, yeah. Like I, I told you the thing about the, the Grand Cardone thing, if you want to maybe put it on. Yeah, yeah. Tell you us know, about that. I um, was approached a few weeks ago by a couple of guys that are involved in the metaverse and stuff. One of them's a very close friend of mine, Daniel. And this is like, Tom, we would love to do a, a gig in Poland with you. So we agreed percentages and stuff. And I said, so what would you like me to do? And they went, we want Grand Cardone at Miami. And I'm like, OK, so I, I'm sit, you know, I know Grant, I know Jared is, is right home on. It's go time. Let's do it. And they went, really? I'm like, yeah, of course. So I just went in the complete laser focus, wrote the goal, put all the details in of exactly the way it was going to pan out, started WhatsApp in Miami, started calling and texting them, and five hours behind us, hammered it, started getting on this stage in where we're negotiations were happening for Grant to do this huge public speaking event in Poland. And in my goal, Grant's going to present, sorry, represent and say, and guys, thanks very much, and here's my guy, Tom Smith. I seen it in my, in my head. I put my arms out like that and felt me right across my, my chest, standing on the stage. It just became real. The more I wrote the goal, the more I text. What was I doing? Phone call, text, email, massive action. Staying on it. Told no, that doesn't suit us. Overcoming it, finding the solution. And at last, last night at 9.45, Miami sent me the message through. My PA just sent me the contract. It's done. And I've agreed a huge public speaking event in Poland. Grant's being televised from Miami. I'm going to be introduced on stage by Grant. Oh my God. And it's done. And I was just, I was out with all the lads last night and everybody was like, what are you smelling that? And I said, I've fucking done it. But I, see, the thing is, 
I don't have confidence anymore. It's faith. I knew it was done. Because I live in the moment now. When I write a goal, I know it's done. And that's at a whole new level of yeah. mentoring. Where you go to the point, you believe it, you receive it, you accept it, it's done. You see it in your head as already finished. And every single time it keeps turning up. It's just And that's at a whole new level where self-doubt doesn't exist. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Because I'm a kid don't... from Belfast, yeah. the Shankill Road, and now I'm going over to do a gig with Grant Cardone yeah. and Megan Billionaire. What? But yeah. even the way I connected with those guys too, what did I do to connect with those guys? Send an $800 uh, donut delivery to their office. I could show you the video after You're this. Joking. And they're all eating the donuts. Hey, Tom. What is it with the donuts? It just works. Who the fuck doesn't <laughs> like a donut? I'll show you the videos, but yeah. this whole office. And then they all started talking with an Irish accent. I started sending them all my videos through COVID, not knowing these guys are actually watching. This guy's a 10 axer from Ireland. Then they sent me my videos back, and the, everybody in Grand Cardone's office was watching me. I'm like, get the fuck. But what was it doing? Massive action, chipping away, push, push, push. To the point, last year, then in March, I'm standing with my army with Grant, get my photograph taken. It all just become a reality. And so tell us about... If you want something bad enough, you just need to go at it and add it and add it and, and add it. when you're writing your goals, tell us what it is you do. So if you want something now, you think it up. You and I say, dream up something now. You're going to say, what do you do? How do you write your goals? Yeah, tell so I always write my goals in the pretense of already achieved it. OK. So at the top of the page, I write, I am so happy and grateful now that... Then I'll write my goal in the pretense that I've already achieved it. So I'll write it like it's already turned up. But I, I don't write one sentence. I'll write a detailed paragraph or a full page because the universe loves detail. Mm. At the end of my goal, excuse me, I'll write it's done because that's my declaration of the universe. Mm. I'll sign it so it's official and I'll put the date on it. Because when I put that date on it, then I know how quick and how much I need to go after that for it to turn up. If you don't put a date on it, you're living a manana manana and tomorrow okay. never comes. So it's a never, never then. It's whenever it's never, so never. you have to be specific. Whereas if you're putting six months from now, you should be up every day, the architect of your life, writing that goal. Do you write the same goal every day? You write the same goals every day until they turn up. I've got journals full of goals that have all yeah. turned up. And you know that date and you go after it. And somebody would then say, but what if it doesn't happen for that date? Well, the only person that didn't make it happen was you because you didn't want it bad enough. Yeah. Like I will make 55 phone calls in 10 minutes. They get the word need to. Then I'll wrap the door, I'll drive to Dublin, I'll fly to Miami, whatever it is. You'll just do it. W-I-T, it whatever it takes is the mentality you need to have. Whatever yeah. it takes. So when people are saying, I tried and given up, no, not going to cut it. Not going to cut it. Like if I was doing mixed martial arts, I would let you choke me out or, or you know, break my arm. I'm not tapping out. But it's the same in life. You can't tap out. Yeah, I tried my best. Stop trying your best. Go for it. And you can live the life of your wildest dreams. Everybody needs to get mental toughness back. Yeah. The do, but. Yeah, and it, it's a dying thing. It is. It's a, like, I know, and I shouldn't say So be no that thing. guy or be yeah. that girl. Be the person that you want to be. Write it, live it, but take the action. And I think what happened was when that book, The Secret, was released and the movie, people started thinking that they could lie in their bed and dream about something and it was yeah. going to land. Yeah, like manifesting a Lamborghini there yeah, in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not happening. But it's like, no, you have you to. You see, and I'm so glad you said that because I do not believe with manifestation. Yeah. Hard work pays off. My system is this. You write a goal, you put a date on it, you know when you're going to achieve it, you write it in the pretense that you've already got it. You completely believe it. Start off with something small so you go, this works. Yeah. Then you become truly the architect of your life. You write them goals, but you take massive action. Put a little column down the side of your goals of who you're calling, whatever phone calls, whatever text messages, whatever WhatsApps, whatever flights you need to make to go and make it happen. And if you go back to the story of the service departments, walking the streets for a year was me trusting the process. The year was massive action. Mm. And then a hotel business was born. And Instead in of year, giving up with no, Did really. you feel like giving up in the year? Did never. You, never. Never entered it your didn't mind. even come close. Second and, and annoyed sometimes, but never gonna giving up was never ever even an option. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, but yeah, I, it's just I suppose it's to me it just feels like my normal backstory, and other people inspire and buzz off it. It's mm. just because I was never gonna give up. It just feels very normal to me. But I think the message for people is you have to work hard. It of is, course, it, it doesn't land on your life on your lap. But then also when you've got it, it's the consistency of keeping it. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency is the secret of all success. 
It's like going to the gym. That muscle or that fitness will only stay there if you're constantly pushing it. Or being married and amazing husband or a wife, that love tank needs to be overflowing, which is constant work all the time into that marriage or yeah. into your kids. Mm. You know? And looking at all the things in your life and keeping them all going. 100%. And yeah. you can't do it all. You know, you can't. Yeah. It just depends listen, how bad you want it. Tell us about your book. Fearless. Fearless, yeah, it's an Is this a dream of yours to write this book? Yeah, uh, you know, people always would have said to me, you know, your advice is golden. Uh, just after my birthday in the middle of COVID, I put pen to paper and started writing my book. Um, and then I finished it and then I published it. And it's just been a really big success. And then at Christmas there, you know, about consistency. Yeah. Doing an audio book is a lot harder than you think. Okay, is it? Yeah, because you you know, you, you get into the flow and you're doing really great. And then the next thing you start slurring your words. So it's stop, start, edit. And it took weeks to do it, but... And you have to have the high energy. If you get tired, then you're yeah, like... Yeah, because you yeah. need to be on the same octane the whole way through it. Okay. But it, it's so worth it, you know, yeah. because for me, it's not about Tom Smith and his book. It's about one person reading that. A ma like a, a guy messaged me last night on Instagram saying, you have no idea how much your audiobooks helped me this week. I really needed it. And then you go, that's why I wrote that book. Yeah. To help that one guy or one girl in the midst of really needing it. And, and then this book is about self-doubt, overcoming self-doubt. Yeah, and Northern Ireland and Belfast and you know how proud I am of our city because Belfast is fearless. You know, we stood yeah. in the face of adversity and war and we came through it as a, as a city and as a country. So. There's a brilliant. lot of good stuff on it. Brilliant, brilliant. You know, the other thing that I cover in the book too is people think about the genie in the lamp. You know, the genie in the lamp, the, the, the genie is the universe and it isn't three wishes. You can have whatever you want. The universe will deliver everything that you want, but you just need to believe. And the big thing I think people need to focus on is what do they want? What do they actually really Goal want? Goal realisation. Yeah. Realise what you want, then go after it. Because when you actually sit down and ask people, they probably don't really people know. People don't know. And that's why I always start my mentoring course. Yeah. First part of it is goal realisation. What do you actually want? Because happiness and wealth comes in all shapes and forms. And it's different for different people. Of course. Yeah. Of course. So, yeah. And listen, what's next for you? So you're going to be an actor. You're an actor now. Yeah, I acted in a film there. Um, I'll probably write another book. The mentorship is going to go global. Um, the huge public speaking event with Grant. We're probably yeah. going to start doing all them all over Europe. I'm speaking to school kids in Newcastle upon Tyne on the 26th of June. Um, I'm going to be in Miami in a few weeks shooting a video with Grant so we can sell the tickets for this huge event. Oh my God. Um, but I just take it all in my stride. Yeah. You know, it just, I suppose it's got to the stage where I'm so, so grateful, but it's, it feels normal too. Yeah. Because I've put on all that work for all these years that something had to turn up. But come here, if you think of your little 10 year old self, Tom, in the little book of trying to stay warm, what do you think he'd think of you now? You did it, kid. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. But you still stink still on that ship, even <laughs> you're 10. <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, I did it. And I kind of will continue to do it. And now I want to inspire and help motivate other people. Yeah. So Are you then, proud of yourself? No, nah, that's not me. I'm just a humble guy. Yeah. And I just still feel like I'm one of the lads. Okay. And um, I'll always... But it's good that you want to give back. I think that's important. Like yeah, well, with schools and kids. Well, yeah, and... you know, for me, on the 1st of June, I'm running the stir equivalent of Mount Everest. Yeah. So I'm going to the Nat West building in London. The buildings give me permission. I'm going to be on the stairs at 4.30 a.m. I'm going to be running seven hours of stairs for the Royal Victoria Hospital Children's Cancer Award because they don't get enough funding. Um, we'll, wow. we'll probably hit 10 grand. But I'm doing that to give back to the charity yeah. that really need that money. But I'm also doing it from a mentoring point of view for people to go, seven hours, my mindset is unbreakable. So, because nobody would even wanted to do it with me. If I can do seven hours yeah. non-stop on stairs, I can't, see, I'll never be on them stairs. I'll take my head off them and I'll be somewhere else for all that whole time period, working on my mindset, but doing it for the, the charity. Yeah, so you just won't be thinking next step, next step. You're Not just like, you'll be somewhere else. I'll be in Miami, I'll be in Poland, I'll be yeah. in the office, I'll be doing all these things and then it's over. And what are you doing to prep for that physically? Um, well, I live in the house building in Manchester, which is 68 floors. Okay. So I'm, I'm dressed with like my, my vest and my headphones on. I'm like something in a Mission Impossible, running the stairs. Um, and then on a Sunday, I'll do three or four hours cardio and then a five mile walk. So, because yeah, piss poor ready. preparation gives piss poor yeah, performance. Absolutely. So I'm not turning up to have a go. I'm turning up and it's already done. I'm just going to get knocked out of the park. Jesus, seven hours. Seven hours, yeah. You'll do it. I mean, if fruit, you're doing fruit four. Fruit pastels are my best friend. Yeah. 
because you need something. So I take handfuls of fruit parcels and keep running. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Are you going to film the whole? Well, yeah, it's all yeah. going to be. It's all going to be shot. Yeah, we're going to shoot it all. Brilliant. Listen, you've been a great inspiration to me, and I only met you, but I knew I had spoken to one of your past um, mentees, Wayne, and I was hooked. Yeah. Because like he's, he, a, great guy, he's a great guy, and yeah, you I'm had so, helped I'm him so, so much. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, he's and super. The big thing for me, that my takeaway watching Wayne is he's doing so well in business, but his social media is just amazing. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I really said to him: do this do, and try that. And he was one of those people, and still is, obviously. But he just he listened to the instructions and carried it out. Yeah. And um, he's an inspiration to me because you know when I'm seeing him on LinkedIn and stuff, I'm just so proud of him. Oh, he's he's a and, super uh, guy. He's gonna be. He's going to be a mega success, oh, even compared is. to what he is. Yeah, he will. And he's a great dad. He's involved in martial arts. He's a great husband. Yeah. I'm proud to call him a friend too. Yeah, yeah. And he's a funny guy too. He like. is. He's great. Yeah. He's yeah. Great Everybody was calling him Matt Damon when he was on here because they were saying he looked like Matt Damon. He <laughs> I was bet you fucking right. loved he that. Yeah. I haven't told him. <laughs> oh, right. I must tell him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he's brilliant. So I'm I'm delighted to be part of your program. So if people want to meet you, reach out. What's where should they go and find you? Yeah. So. Um, there's about 10 fake accounts, so watch Instagram. Yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. something, because when I connected with you first, then I got about 10 fake yeah, um, yeah. messaging me. Yeah, Yeah. so, so. Tom Smith, S-M-Y-T-H, the entrepreneur. My following's like 38.4 thousand, or maybe more, but yeah. um, Tom Smith on LinkedIn, or send me a, get, you know, get my telephone number off you, yeah, but yeah. I'm always available. I don't sleep much, and I will contact you myself. But yeah. the mentoring programme, is changing people's lives, and yeah. it's definitely the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And it's, I have no doubt, because I've re wrote the goal, you know, it's it's going to be global well, in, a, in the biggest way. Also, it's a great networking place. It's a great place to network with other businesses. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. I have a guy, Matthew Reynolds, that's one of my clients for a year. And he's now not my client. He's like nearly, he's like my son. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love him to bits. And we're, we're building eight houses in Leeds at just, a, just yeah. under a million each. He's my business partner. So, but, so, but to meet know, other people, it's, yeah, great, it's know, a great place to be. I have another guy, Richard, who I became very close with, and like, you've got that one-to-one -one connection, you've got the groups, and it's you're getting business partners and friends yeah. and you know everything. It's just yeah. it's unique networking's in that way. perfect. Yeah, yeah. But so we need you to get your, your business card. I will. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to text you when I do it. Please do. Yes, I will. So listen, thanks so much for being here. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you, you very much understand. for the opportunity. Thank you.